Hello, it's Graciela here from PowerGI. In today's video, we'll be learning how to use Excel Connector in Power Automate with dynamic files. So let's get started. Today, if you want to use this connector, for example, to get the rows present in a table of a specific file, you need to use the file browser to get to that file and select it, just like I have done here. If, for example, under this same folder, you're going to get different files with different names that you, of course you don't know in advance, most likely you have tried to work around this issue by using variables and building the file name using functions. However, if we test this, as you can see, the file that we are using in the first one that we selected is exactly the same that we had in the other one that we, that we built with functions. And we'll still get this error. This is because Excel doesn't really use the file name. Behind the scenes, it needs to use the file ID. And we're going to see how we can use this ID to connect to variable file names. There are different scenarios in which uh, you will want to use dynamic files for the Excel connector. One that is very common is when a new file is created in a SharePoint folder. So that's the one that we're going to use as base. So I'm going to select the trigger when a new file is created in a folder. And I will select the SharePoint site and the folder. So in this case, I have here one that is called Excel files. And I'm going to select it. Now we are going to use the Excel connector. And for this specific case, we are going to be using the list rows present in a table a scenario because we are assuming a case in which you have different users and those users are, are uploading at different times. And there's some files that contain some invoice information, like the one that we have here. And once they upload that into the SharePoint folder, you want to take this information and append it into your general log that has all the rows uploaded by your users. So the first thing that we need to do is the same that we did with the SharePoint connector and select the SharePoint site and then select the library. And once we reach to the file, as you can see, the new file that was created, the output of that trigger contains an ID. And this is what we actually can use to help the connector to recognize correctly our file. So I'm going to select the ID. And of course, when I try to select the table from the drop down, it won't allow me and it will tell me that it's invalid because it doesn't know what is the file. So it doesn't find any table. So in that case, we're going to click on enter custom value and that will open the expression a screen for us so we can type it in. Uh, in this case, I'm going back to my file and go to the table design tab and I see that my table is called table one. So I'm going to rename it to table details just for this example. And the only requirement for this workaround to work is that all the files that you're going to get and that you're going to try to read from this flow need to always have a table that is called with the very same name that you are setting up your flow. And of course, your columns need to be the same if you want to access them through the flow and do some actions. So what we're going to do is to write the concat function and then single quotes. And between those single quotes, we are going to type in the table name. So I'm just going to click OK. And we are ready to test. And I'm going to search for the folder. And I will go ahead and upload my file now, which is going to have a random name. So the file is now available. And the test has started. As you can see, it's correctly recognizing the content of my file here based on the ID that I passed to it. So now it's time to use this, to actually use this data or to use the output from this connector in another action. So in this case, we are going to transfer everything that our users are uploading to the general log. And that general log is the file that we are that we are seeing in the screen now, in which we have the very same four columns that our regular files have, plus a timestamp. And the table name that we have here is general log. So I'm just gonna uh, upload this into 
the previous folder and there is where my general log will be placed. We need a second card to add rows. We're going to use add a row into a table and in this case we know in advance what's the file that we want to insert the row into so we are going to use the file selector that Power Automate provides. We're going to select the general log and select this table. And now it's going to automatically recognize our, our, our columns. But as you can see, nothing is showing up in the dynamic content that is coming from the previous card of the Excel connector. That is because it doesn't know which are the columns that are present in that table, so it cannot show anything here. At this moment of the process, Power Automate doesn't know which are the columns or which is the table or which is the file. So what I need to work around that is with this same sample file that we just loaded to test that the connector was working properly, I'm going to actually do a connection to that file with the very same action that we are trying to use, in this case, list rows present in a table. I'm going to select again and then the document library and let's use that sample file here. And let's select the table. Now, as you can see, they are showing up, but they are actually pointing to the list rows present in a table two step. So they are coming from here. But what I'm going to do is select the invoice number. And as you can see, it is wrapping up my row into a loop and I'm going to keep selecting the other columns and in the timestamp I am going to just add a quick card to get today's date in my time zone and now that we have our time zone we can complete the last column with the converted time. So uh, at this point this loop is looking into the results of the list row presence in a table too. So what, what I'm going to do is just place my um, the cursor right next to the, the expression that was generated and I'm going to copy it and paste it in a notepad. The only thing that I'm going to do is remove the underscore 2. So we're going to change this to point into our card. So I'm going to copy this and delete what we had and just paste it back. So I'm just going to delete this card because we're not going to use it anymore. I'm going to save and, and test again. So the, the previous file that we loaded was the copy 2 and I'm going to load the copy 4. And in the meantime I'm going to load some more copies. So we can see all the rows coming in into our general log file. And as you can see all the flows have run correctly in Power Automate and if we go to the general log file we see everything appended there. And there are other use cases in which you can use this. For example, if you receive an email with an Excel attachment, you can create a file in SharePoint and that action in Power Automate will output an ID. And you can use this ID to also select dynamically which Excel file you want to get data on. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. We are PowerGI.